Hit that like button, just like Tyson. Up arrest car camera that led to charges for three Miami Beach police officers. The video shows police officers taunting one of the men arrested for videotaping the incident. This video is disturbing. You see a man on the ground, bloodied and handcuffed, and in a very bizarre moment, get this, one of these officers actually reaches down and takes this man's Gatorade and drinks it. What we have here is a case of police brutality, which ended up with felony charges. We got tourists coming in from New York City to go to Miami to have fun. And the reason why all of this happened is because they videotaped the arrest that was already caught on hotel cameras. What do you think about these officers being charged, Clarence G? Oh, man, I think they, they deserve it. You know, get some justice. I think that was messed up, though. Uh, you know, you're going to take the man's drink and drink it after you don't whoop them down. That's like some, uh, like a slap in the face. You know, and the craziest part about that was the drink was halfway gone. What do you think about this particular case, sir? When you go down to Miami for vacation. You end up getting your ass beat because you videotape police officers arresting somebody that was, you feel they were roughing up. Um, with this particular thing, man, it actually, you know, it hits kind of hard for me, you know, being a, a young black male in America, um, because we take the heat for so much stuff, you know what I mean? And they, they look at us as a target. They, they can do what they want to do with us because they got power, just, they got authority. Um, you know, I, I feel like they should be, they should get the most harsh treatment possible because I mean, not only do you beat them up just for, for filming a uh, rest that you was already making, a wrong for a rest that you was already making, you beat them up and then you basically, like he said, slap them in the face by sitting there and taking the man's drink and drinking it in front of him. And then laugh, laugh about it and tell him to quit crying and stuff like that. That's, that's like the ultimate sign of disrespect. You know what I mean? But they would have felt bad if, if the man would have ended up whooping their ass. You know what I mean? It would have been all over the news then and they would have tried to take him to jail and all that. You know, and then y'all, if I was him, I would definitely sue. You know, they let him go with no char, you know, no charges uh, on him, which he didn't deserve any charges because he didn't do anything. But I mean, that's a that's a bad situation to be in. You know what I mean? And I just, you know, I hope the man and his family, everybody is okay. Mister Blue, police are getting charged with felonies for assault now. Oh my no, God, is this a new world era? That was a misdemeanor. Ain't no, ain't no felony. It's still just a slap on the wrist. They should have got more than that. They really need to start analyzing, start doing better assessments of who they let become police officers. These racist ass bastards. Even the black ones got tendencies to fuck us up. Just need to re recall. You know, it don't take no type of education to become a police officer. Maybe these motherfuckers should be college educated, master level clinicians or something, because this shit we got here on these streets ain't about shit. A lot of those guys need their masters in authority. You can disrespect a Starbucks person. You dumb motherfucker. This ain't how I want my drink. And they handle it just easy as peasy. But the cop, they get all riffed. They want to pull their gun. They want to tase you. They want to fuck you up. I mean, how is a Starbucks worker better at managing their emotions than a police officer? Well, that's not even the worst thing, Mr. Blue. The worst thing is if, if the police officer shot somebody Let's just say empty a clip inside of somebody. It'll be a okay. But if you empty a clip inside of somebody, let's say you went too far. You know what I'm saying? You shot too many times. You only had to shoot once or twice. They expect us to have more training than police officers. And that makes no sense to me. Sarah, so yeah. you said that uh, you hope that this guy sued. How much money should he get for that beatdown? Oh, man. I mean, you know... For one, you know, you publicly humiliated me, had me bleeding. I mean, I got all kind of doctor's bills probably now. Um, you know, people are going to, you know, certain people are going to look at him a certain way now because the people that are that are racist that feel like the cops were right, they're going to look at him a certain way. He, he may even start getting threats to his life, stuff like that. So, you know, I'm going to need to be set for life. You know what I mean? Just being, just being honest, it ain't even about money, but... What you did, my life could have easily been ended and my family would have had to, to deal with that pain for the rest of their life. So I feel like, you know what I mean, it's, I, it, it would have been easily, you know, $100 million range. You know what I mean? I know they might say, oh, that's a lot of money, but, you know, you can't put money on, 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 on death, a life or death, you know? So 
But one other thing to add to that, another thing that we should look into more is situations with cops that they they that don't go on the news that a lot of people do not know about that are still wrongful situations. And the reason I say that is because several years ago, uh, me and my brother and uh, my cousin, we were on the way to Georgia and uh, we were going to Atlanta. We we uh, took a detour into a city called Douglasville, Georgia. Well, it was it was at night. It was it was dark outside, and the GPS. I was trying to get to uh, a hotel, so I turned around this gas station. As I was turning, a police officer was passing by, so he went around and turned around and got behind me, followed me for like three miles. You know, we went through a red light and all that. Stop. You know. Well, anyway, I came over a hill, and as soon as I topped that hill, it was fifteen carloads of police just like ambushed me, and I'm like. You know what's what's going on you know what i mean because i know i didn't do anything i don't even i'm i don't do anything illegal like i don't do any kind of drugs i don't even i don't even drink you know what i mean i'm i just you know just be chilling so you know guy pulls up he's about 50 feet away from the car got his car parked pretty much on the other side of the road he started talking on the um on the intercom he was like you know reach your hands out of the vehicle and open the door slowly he made made me get out slowly, put my hands on my head, walk backwards towards him. As now all the all the police that pulled up, they all got their car and had guns pointed at us at the car. So at this point, I'm like, what in the world going on? Did I, I mean, did I threaten the president or something? Y'all y'all trying to, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, I do what he says. You know, I, I back up to him. You know, as I get back to him, you know, it's like the gun the gun is on the back of my head. And this was right after all the Trayvon Martin stuff and all that happened. So, you know, it was really bad at that time. So I was like, man, I just, I was like, man, I, I hope I ain't on nobody t-shirt. You know what I mean? It's just, but, you know, I complied, did what they said. And so they did my brother and my cousin the same way. They got the vehicles. Um, they got the vehicle and, uh, you know, backed them up, put us all in handcuffs and made us sit on the front of the police car. So then the guy was like, um, he just started searching the vehicle. The guy who pulled us up, the main guy, searched the vehicle, just started searching. So the other guys, by this point, they put all their guns away because, you know, we were in handcuffs and like we couldn't do anything. Um, so one of the guys, he was like, hey, he's like, did they even, did he tell you, you know, why, why we're doing this? I said, no, you know, I, I would like to know because, you know, I'm sitting here in, in handcuffs, you know, had guns pointed at me, you know, all that. So long story short, the gas station that I turned around in, they said it got robbed earlier that night and that the only description they had was a black male wearing all black. So that was his reason for stopping me. And, you know, I mean, nothing was found because, you know, of course, obviously we didn't do it. You know, they end up letting us go, but it's just the situation could have been handled a lot better. You know, and if we would have had any false movements, you know, we would have been the next you know, story that is on, on the, uh, the news or on social media. Wow, man, that sounds terrible. I'm glad that you survived that whole situation. Mr. Blue, Serum said $100 million. How much you think should be paid out to these brothers for this embarrassing moment? I was thinking, you know, the price of his Gatorade, to be honest. What about the price of the stitches that went up on his eye? Because he, he was bleeding from his eye and all of that type of stuff. If you got Medicaid, that's covered. The price of the Gatorade, Clarence G. What do you think? No, I, I, I'd say he should break the bank. Get a get a uh, nice lump sum because <clears throat> that way he can relocate with his family. Because I'm quite sure a lot of other cops are going to want to retaliate. Threaten, well, they, they, they're threaten. from New York City. And they were down in Miami visiting. So, like, he wasn't from down there, He's from New York City. He's just a visitor. So I think uh, I think he should at least get a million dollars out of the whole situation. And um, I think the money should come out of the pension for the cop. What do you think about that, Mr. Blue? Even if it's the Gatorade money, it needs to come out the pension for the cop, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was just joking about the Gatorade, you know what I'm saying? I agree with um, Saram regarding that and what Clarence said. But I don't know what the amount would be. It's just funny, you know what I'm saying? Wrong place, wrong time. I mean, 
Sometimes, I mean, I, what did he hope to accomplish by recording that incident? What did he want to happen? Did he want his video to go viral? Sometimes our, our crusade for fame is our, our worst undoing. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand that. Sir, since he's, he brought that up, that's very interesting. Why was he videotaping them anyway? Um, you know, he could have been looking at it like, oh, you know, my my fellow black brother is getting arrested for no reason. Let me let me make sure I have his back. You know what I mean? It may not even be about, you know, particularly going viral. It's just the fact of, you know, if you see a, a fellow black man in trouble, if you feel like you can help him, then you do what you can do to help him. Um, you know, in most most cases, when police officers are getting filmed, they don't attack the person doing the filming. If, if the if the person is not the person that that's getting arrested, you know what I mean. So, you know, he probably didn't think anything like that was gonna happen. And plus, it plus it was probably more people than just him out there recording as well. But uh, I feel like he just did it. You know, he was like, "Hey, I'm helping out my fellow person that's getting arrested because I feel like." You know, the way it's going about it is the wrong way. So I want to see what I can do to help. Wow, that's powerful. Clarence G, was he just a little bit too close to the scene? Should he been back a little bit? Because I'm pretty sure it was other people filming too. It's Miami, right? Yeah, he might have been too close to the scene. Ho hopefully he wasn't taunting them, you know, at while he was filming <clears throat> to antagonize them, to make them want to uh, attack him. Hopefully he was doing Well, let me it. say this, Clarence G. Let me say this. Um... The news said the reason why the charges was dropped because the video from the hotel, which was filming as well, that they went into, showed that the man actually complied with the police officer. Wow. That's not surprising. That's not surprising at all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was the end of the stories that I got for this week, guys. You know, I really want to say thank you, guys. I really appreciate you jumping on this show with me for over an hour just talking about stuff. I'm tired. I know you tired. I know some of y'all got to get up in the morning. Me, myself, personally, I got to get up at second shift, so I'm cool. Serum, what's your next project? What you got going on? Let the people know. Um, I'm actually, uh, actually, uh, on top of what I was telling you earlier, I also have a podcast myself. Um, it's called All in All with Alex. Cause my real name is Alex. Um, and so right now I'm focusing on mental health. So. You know, if there's anybody you know that's, that has any mental health issues that they would be open to talking about, you know, maybe they uh, almost committed suicide or anything like that. Something that they, they could talk about that will help the next person that's dealing with mental health, you know. So that's that's what I'm focusing on at the moment. Um, so, yeah, just I'm on I'm on Spotify. I'm on all the podcast sites. I'm on YouTube as well. Be sure to invite me because I got a lot to say too, Mr. Blue. What you got going on right now, my brother? You can check me out on the Urban Breakdown podcast where me and my crew, we just talk mad shit about everything. That's the Urban Breakdown podcast available on all streaming podcasts, including YouTube. DJ Clarence G, what do you have going on? Man, they can check me out on Fridays, <clears throat> uh, uh, Heavy in the Streets. I seen you had an interview coming up. Yeah, I got one this Saturday. Actually, we normally I normally do them on Friday, but we switched it up this time. Um, actually, interviewing a brother that uh, is running a nonprofit organization in Texas. Well, like I said, it's time for us to end the show. And I just want to say peace. <laughs>